My quest continues to find the worst anime ever made. My adventure is a lot like looking for the lost city of gold, except instead of gold, I'm looking for shit stains on a public sidewalk. And today I'm actually watching the most famous piece of trash since Rebecca Black's Friday premiere. I'm watching Mars of Destruction. It's actually created by the same studio behind the last super stinker we watched, which was Skelter Plus Heaven. Idea Factory, that's the name of their crew. So somehow they have two of the three lowest rated anime of all time on my anime list, and this one has a big cult following because of how bad it is. It's actually impressive that Idea Factory has popped out so many universally hated anime. They must just accidentally animate these things in between their employees eating sand and snorting glue. And then they're just pleasantly surprised when they end up with something that resembles a movie on their desk. But anyway, Mars of Destruction is what we're watching today, and luckily it comes in two video qualities, 240p and unwatchable eye strain. So instead of cursing you all with migraines by forcing you to look at the unbearable brain rotted quality that this usually exists in, I'll display the high definition cinema quality 240p, the way God intended it to be watched. What an intense introduction to capture your attention right away, some edge of your seat type thrills. Humanities, Mars exploration teams on their way back to Earth, and mysteriously their ship blows up. And that's a bit of an exaggeration, it doesn't really blow up, it just kind of like peters out. It's like a sparkler getting extinguished. Now there's aliens on Earth and we're not happy about it, so the government has come up with the ultimate countermeasure, the P-90 Rush Waifu Defense Force. So these goofy Power Rangers villains can shoot piss missiles from their mouth and unfortunately blast the head off of one of the waifus. And it really rattled me to my core and got me thinking about how fragile and precious life is. One second you're with your friends confronting Dirty Bill and the boys at the park, and the next second your friend's head has been vaporized and they're squirting blood like it's slime time at Nickelodeon Studios. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure that their anti-alien team is just a rebranded neighborhood watch because they're clearly not very trained. This girl ran up and missed every single bullet from her clip at point blank range on a giant enemy. But I guess it wouldn't matter if she hit the shots anyway because her friend did and it did nothing but tickle the monster. So even if they are just like stormtroopers closing their eyes here with their aim, it seems useless. They're not equipped to handle the situation. I love the voice acting from the aliens here. It just sounds like someone plugging their nose and then doing Banjo-Kazooie sound effects. We've now been introduced to Takeru, humanity's last hope against the aliens, I guess, and he's not very reliable. Against two of these small little Kirby Digimon things, he nearly died. So he has this like lightsaber thing that I guess is made out of foam or plastic or something because it's not very strong. But he manages to stab one with it, and he's not like overly bothered by getting stabbed. But while he's like mounted on top of him, like, you know, shake waiting the sword in there, one of the other aliens comes up behind him and gives him a back scratch, 
and it's really painful for him, and then he shoots sunlight at his back or whatever, and then he manages to stab that guy slightly, and through remarkable struggle, was able to defeat some lowly grunts at a playground, and nearly died for it. Bro, humanity is better off putting their last hopes into the power of thoughts and prayers. This guy is not strong. They've done a terrible job of showcasing this guy being a badass. He just gets his ass beat by two tiny aliens. And now he's, he's dying, and they're trying to use a heart massage to bring him back. Luckily, the deep tissue massage was enough to restart his heart. I'm no medical professional, I, I'm not a classically trained doctor, but I don't know how often a heart massage is performed, but my god, it seems effective. We also get to learn a little bit more about Takaru. His dad is the one who created the Mars suit and forced his son to wear it against his will. And now he's alive and back to this corporeal realm thanks to the power of the masseuse on staff. But I actually think this is a terrible thing for humanity because now they're going to be forced to rely on him again. And he's super weak. I feel like he would get manhandled by a group of elementary school bullies. But I do really like this scene here. The attention to detail in Mars of Destruction is unmatched. Remember the girl whose head got blown off? Well, luckily they got her to the hospital, so there was still a chance they could have brought her back, I guess. I love that idea, like, oh my god, our friend just, her whole head just got deatomized. Quick, get her to the emergency room, maybe the doctors know some kind of head massage that can reassemble this at an atomic level. And then, like, they're disappointed when they're like, yeah, no, this one's gone, they're like, oh, no, I can't believe this, I thought there was still a chance. Great scene. Asto, now we learn a little bit about the ASS program, and I can assure you none of them are good at anything. Every time that any of these agents are on the screen, they're just getting beat the fuck up or having their head blown off. I'm cutting out a lot because I don't think any of you care about the plot, so I'm just going to tell you what's happening. They're now transporting something in a van, something that they don't describe. They just say, like, do you think the aliens want this? And like, hey, maybe. And that's about it. That's all we really know about what's happening currently. And then they get ambushed by a giant group of aliens and a super alien. And, uh, you know, they came to party and they brought snacks. Uh, the snack they brought is lemonade that they keep fucking shooting at every goddamn person on screen. Uh, they decapitate two police officers and then mutilate some other guy. The music choice is inspiring here. In fact, Beethoven himself wrote this piece for Mars of Destruction. Everyone knows that Beethoven was a giant weeb, and it's great to see them proudly display his work here. I will say, while this is obviously not good, Mars of Destruction is at least animated, which is more than I could say for Skelter Heaven. <laughs> Huh. 
This is a top 10 anime fight scene, I would argue. The way that they're really weaving in the classical music, it, oh my god. Chef's kisses, I swear. They've really outdone themselves here. So, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here. So, the bullets aren't working. He's just absorbing them. They also can very rarely hit bullets in the first place because every single one of these assed soldiers is overdosing on Xanax or something, I guess. They just cannot, like, actually aim anything. But god damn it, that won't stop them from trying. Also, Takaru has his arm broken, so he's not happy. From out of nowhere, they just happen to have the ultimate super weapon, which she pulls out of her asshole, I guess. And I will say, one thing I really appreciate is the attention to detail when it comes to even the voice acting. So you'll hear that Takaru's voice is muffled, and that's because he's wearing the Mars suit. The genius. So usually in anime, or literally anything, when someone in a suit's talking, you can hear them. It still sounds like they're just talking normally. But here they're like, wait, he wouldn't be sounding normal because he's in a suit. So then they had the voice actor talk into his hands kind of like this or like into a pillow or something. And it really drives home the idea that this man is suffocating in that suit and you can barely fucking hear him. Takaru no scopes the big bad super villain and then all of a sudden we're now listening to these two guys talk who I assume is the president and Doc Brown and they're going over you know what they've recovered and the information they've learned and they've confirmed that Homo sapiens used to live on Mars. Alright. <laughs> Turns out humanity was influenced by the Martians and the big bad guy rises like the Undertaker. Like fucking Dracula rising out of his coffin, he's back and he's taken Takeru to tell him some evil shit. <laughs> Yeah, so the firing squad finally starts landing bullets and hits him with the fatality uh, roll credits. That's where it ends. All at once, they try and just elbow deep fist some fucking awful exposition in out of nowhere. And it doesn't really work. I feel like by the end of this movie, the end of the project, they knew they didn't really tell a story. But then decided they had to at least try to make it look like they did. So the director just came out of nowhere. They're like, watch this in the last like hour worth of animating. Give me one extra scene and I'm going to make a masterpiece. So he's like, not real humans. These are real humans. These are invaders. Where's my Oscar? You know, like, it just doesn't work. Nothing in the movie worked, but at the very least, this time they animated something. This came out a year after Skelter Heaven, I believe. So they're only getting better. This came out in 2005. I think by 2060, they might be able to make an anime that's almost passable. Right now, they're on an upward trajectory, and they're hitting their stride. They're peaking, and I can't wait for their next one. That's about it. See ya.